So what's the recipe for a good life? How about eat, drink, sleep, work, love, repeat? It sounds simple enough. <laughs> well, in today's world, I'm not so sure anyone's living that simply. At this point, it seems like the recipe of choice is eat, drink, argue, yell, sleep, work, hate, and debate. Is there any way to untangle the mess we've created? I think the vineyard may have some helpful insight for us on this. Stay tuned. Hey Posse, thanks for joining me today for another episode in my life series. Today we're talking about unity in the midst of diversity and how to strengthen the productivity of a vineyard. As human beings, we're independent yet simultaneously we're interdependent. That's just the way life is and that's the way we're hardwired. You do your thing, I do my thing. We think we're independent, but in reality we're incredibly interdependent. And most of the time, we don't even know it. In this episode, we're going to look at a number of things related to unity. We'll start with something very simple and very practical, the different jobs and responsibilities in a vineyard and winery. Then we'll see how those jobs offer some incredibly valuable life parallels. Specifically, we'll see why interdependence is essential to human flourishing and what we can do to strengthen our society and simplify our lives. If this somehow resonates with you, uh, I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comments below or subscribe. The subscription is free. Uh, also, ring the little bell. And best of all, if this was helpful, share this with a friend. All right, let's dive in. You know, it's easy to get distracted by the beauty of these places. The reality is there's a lot that goes on here unseen a lot of work that needs to be done to produce a beautiful bottle of wine. Wineries come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, from small family run-up businesses to large, enormous corporate syndicates. There are jobs here that run the entire gamut. Uh, you have jobs that specialize in all aspects of producing a beautiful bottle of wine, from maintenance to production to bottling to marketing and sales. Uh, there are lots of moving parts and people required to fulfill all the functions of the vineyard and winery. All these parts and people need to learn how to work together. It's essential. Regardless of the size of the winery and vineyard, all the jobs need to be done. You know, it just makes sense. Uh, the, the smaller the vineyard, the fewer people you'll have working there. The larger the vineyard, the more people will be employed. It's a simple economic factor. The bigger the vineyard, the more grapes you have. The more grapes you have, the more wine you make. The more wine you produce, the more wine you sell, and uh, the more money you end up making. There's a direct correlation between the size of a vineyard and the amount of bottles being produced and the number of employees necessary to run the vineyard. In some of the, the smaller or mid-sized vineyards, you have people wearing multiple hats to fulfill or accomplish all the different jobs and functions. There's work to be done and uh, this work is done by people with uh, very unique talents, abilities, uh, training and interest. The range of skills and abilities are impressive and the long-term knowledge of what's going on with the, the grapes around the vineyard in the winery is enhanced as all the parts and people consistently work together with one another, like a team. This consistency is invaluable in creating a phenomenal bottle of wine. Well, actually, let's take a look at some of the unique functions and workers in the vineyard and winery. You've got people to take care of the, the grounds of, of the winery. Uh, some tend the vines, maintain the vineyards, cut the grass, and uh, properly irrigate each grape varietal. At just the perfect time, they harvest the grapes, collect and sort the grapes, and even assist with wine production. You've got people that actually make and produce the wine. This includes the winemaker, 
lab technicians who analyze wine throughout the entire fermentation process plus the aging process to make sure it's developing properly. Then you have the bottling department. Specialists involved in, in buying bottles, people who oversee the filling of the bottles, and there are others who maintain the production line where the bottles are being filled. Some people are there to uh, fine tune the production line machinery to make sure it's working properly, while others are there actually packing the wine into cases. Another part of the team is involved in cellaring the wine. These people have uh, wines organized by varietal, uh, vintages, bottle size, and a whole variety of other specifications. And we're not even done yet. We can't forget the tasting room specialists who facilitate wine tastings, promote wine sales to, uh, to the guests, and lead winery and vineyard tours. The gift shop staff promotes not only wine sales, but a variety of other merchandise sales. And of course, the unsung hero who ships the wine to consumers and guests who live outside the immediate area or uh, who would like the, the wines they've purchased to be shipped directly to their home rather than lugging it home by themselves. There are so many different parts, pieces and people uh, that all have to fit together to make the, the winery and the vineyard a functioning property. All these people make up a diverse, close-knit, strong team with different talents, abilities, training, and interest. Each individual working in harmony with the others enables the winery to fulfill its purpose, which is producing a unique bottle of wine for us to drink. How are you doing there? Is this information making sense? If it is, write teamwork in the comments below. You know, I've always loved teamwork. It's so bizarre to me when teams so clearly lack teamwork and yet they wonder why they're not making or meeting their objectives. Let me show you uh, what I mean by this. There's that historic divide between sales and operation. It's interesting in an unhealthy team, one part of the team thinks they're more important, they matter more than another part of the team. It's easy for those who sell the wine to say, None of this is going to go anywhere without me or us selling it. Meanwhile, another part of the team, say those working in the vineyard, could easily say, you wouldn't have anything to sell if it wasn't for us tending the vines and growing the grapes. The same arrogance can infiltrate the people who are crushing the grapes, bottling the wine, even those keeping everything organized in the warehouse or cellar. When you see people accentuating the importance of their individual talents, abilities, training, or position, you really don't have a cohesive team at all. That's nothing but a group of individuals looking out for their own best interests. The vision of growing and caring for grapes and developing, maintaining, and running a clean winery only becomes a reality when the right people are in the right places based on their abilities, interests, and training. And as they function as a cohesive team. The good book says, now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem uh, to be weaker or uh, indispensable and the part that we think is less honorable, we need to treat them with special honor. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lack it so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part of the body suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. You know, whether you're growing grapes, making automobiles, involved in government, on an athletic team, or in an orchestra, we need to recognize the importance and strength of our diversity. This is vital for us to create a healthy grapevine, so to speak. Without a, a diverse, unified team, we won't fulfill our purpose. Instead, 
will make some really awful bottles of wine if we even get that far. Uh, because wine grape growing is a long-term game, we have to stay disciplined and work together through drought, cold nights, and seasons of pruning. But it's so worth it in the end when we taste that phenomenal wine. And truthfully, it's so worth it every step of the way because maintaining a staff of skilled employees who can provide consistency on the job not only benefits the customer who enjoys the wine, but also benefits the, the vineyard owner and the employees. The owner is able to, to grow his or her business and hire more people, while the employees are able to participate in rewarding work and support their families. You know, while we're talking about the long game, the truth is the wine with most character comes from vines uh, with a history. Vines that have been carefully tended for decades, but this can only happen with a stable team or crew of committed vineyardists working together as a cohesive unit with a singular purpose. So it is with life. The best fruit is produced when we work as a unit and when we recognize that our differences are what makes us so strong. There are a lot of different things that need to be done in the vineyard, our homes, our local communities, and our nation. Are you all in? Are you committed to the unity in the midst of diversity? Are you prepared to do your part and do it for the long haul? We all have different talents, abilities, training, and interests. I know you have a passion and an ambition, so trust me when I say we need you to pursue it boldly with commitment, purpose, and care, because that's how we'll be able to get through some of these dry seasons in life and still create a beautiful wine. So, Take some time right now, think through what you're going to do, the role you're going to play. Maybe you need to ask yourself, what is it in my life that needs to be pruned? Is it my attitude? Are there things that I say or things that I do that are damaging to the overall well-being of the vineyard? <laughs> no, seriously, I know you want to keep scrolling through these YouTube videos, but actually turn off the device for just a few minutes and ask yourself, what am I uniquely gifted to do, and who am I uniquely positioned to love? And then do it. It doesn't have to be complicated or flashy, but it has to be done. And believe me, the vineyard will be better off for it, as will the wine, as will you. Well, there you have it. A little life lesson from the vineyard about unity in the midst of diversity. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If this somehow resonated with you, subscribe or hit the little bell to be notified when I post other videos like this. Also, if you believe this might be meaningful to a friend, share this video. I'm sure they'd really appreciate it. Until next time, cheers.